Hey, welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to do Neo Geo's League Bowling, and this is I'm going to play on the MBS. Uh, sorry about the audio quality. It came out pretty rough, so I'm just going to mostly talk over it. You might hear a little bit of sound effects in the background. And I know it's not the prettiest with the uh, little screen flicker that goes on, but again, it's... Uh, I don't see that when I'm playing. As anyone knows that when you record stuff, if you don't have a camera that can sync up exactly to the monitor, it's going to get a little bit of that. But this is just the uh, regulation mode. There's three modes, regulation, flash, and strike 90. So in the regulation mode, it's pretty basic. You're just bowling like regular. If you know the rules of uh, bowling and how strikes, you get a strike, plus you get the next two balls. If you get a spare, you get the spare, plus the next ball added to your frame. If you have an open, you just get what's in that. So... The way to control this is you can move your player left and right, place them on the uh, on the alley, and then you've got the control meter. Now the control meter goes back and forth, and you got to be pretty quick because you only have uh, nine ten seconds to do this. So if you hit right dead center on the meter, it's going to go straight, and then you've got your your power, so you can throw the ball really slow or really fast. And if you throw a hook, the speed of your ball is going to affect how much you hook. Now another thing that will affect the hook is if you see the meter going past the center to the right or the left and you hit the button then, you're going to get more hook than if you wait for it to bounce back off the end of the meter, I guess you'd say, and wait for it to bounce back heading towards the center. That's going to give you less of a hook. So that lets you have a little more finesse and control, especially if you're trying to throw the ball straight to pick up single pins. You kind of want to hit it on the way towards the center instead of waiting for it to pass a little bit because it'll hook more if you go past it. Hopefully that makes sense. But this is a super fast paced bowling game and it's a lot more fun than the old ones that used to use the roller balls that were similar to Golden Tee, like uh, I think Birdie King or something. This was more arcade style and uh, super fun. Now I ended up having a pretty good game here because uh, I was getting lucky. I, I had started with a 15-pound ball before, and I wasn't getting a lot of carry, so I dropped down to a 14-pound ball. And it could be just the way I was playing the game today, but it seemed like the 14 had a lot better carry for strikes for me. So I don't know if that's really a thing. I noticed that when I looked at the game system setup, it was set to uh, level 4 for difficulty. So that must be just the standard level of difficulty. I haven't tried dropping it or, or raising it to see if uh, I can get a 300 or something. If you drop it real low, and maybe that makes it really easy. So the next one's going to be Flash, and Flash is while you're bowling, you got to watch your timer, but you also got to try and match your strike up to land on, you can see one of these spots, 100, 200, 300. So there's a lot of timing in this, which is very, very difficult to get 300 because you got to get a strike and you got to get it to land on that box. And then to pick up a spare, it's the, it's the one on the bottom, so the 50, 100s, 200s. And if you pick up a spare, you get that value if it lands on it. And un unlike regular bowling, you're not going to be able to get uh, a 10th frame the same way. There's just one frame in the 10th frame. So it's not like if you get a strike, you're going to get more. Which I think leads to the possibility of getting a 3,000. But it's definitely very tricky to time everything out on this. Um, I played about four or five games and I've never really played it that much because it doesn't interest me as much as just the regular bowling game, but it's still fun. It's still fun to do once in a while. Now I also used to have league bowling a long time ago when I had picked up an AES back in the probably early 90s, around 94, I'd say. The uh, the AES was uh, for sale, but it was usually 500 bucks. And I remember I was on AOL, and I saw that they had classifieds on AOL. And someone had posted for only $200 with shipping an AES with League Bowling, Samurai Showdown, and King of Fighters. And foolishly, because that thing's worth a fortune now. I parted with it back in around oh, 2001, 2002, because I, I thought, what, what am I going to do? I still had only the three games because it was too expensive to buy any other games. 
but again, it's it's it doesn't really hurt my feelings too much because fortunately I've been able to use my brother's uh, MBS he's left at my house for the last decade. But as you can see, it's it's a interesting scoring format on this Flash one, and probably the game that takes the longest because you're timing things out so you end up waiting a little longer. So an interesting aspect of this is you could hook up multiple Neo Geo machines uh, up to four and you could have an eight player game. Now I'm pretty sure that you can buy this on the PlayStation Store and uh, on the Switch for like about eight bucks, but I think it only has four player. And that's probably just due to the limitations you have with controllers that you can sync up to it. So the last one's called Strike 90, and this one's pretty simple. If you throw a strike, you get 90. If you get a spare, you get 60. And if you get an open frame, you pretty much just get whatever pin count you have. The only other oddity is if you happen to leave the 710 split and you throw it in between instead of picking it up, because you can't, even if you pick it up, that's you know, almost impossible, you get 60. But if you throw it in between, you get 30 points. So that's usually what most people would do. So if anyone has interest in this game, you can usually purchase it on numerous systems like the Switch. Uh, you can get it on PlayStation Store. And I think they run about $8. A um, little, little pricey for a game like this that has a very limited gameplay and, you know, fun unless you really loved it. I mean, if it's on sale or something sometime for half price, it's definitely worth it. Uh, but otherwise, you know, I, the, the rating I would give this back in the day was really uh, maybe a six or seven. I, I, I'll go with a seven because it was fun and exciting to play and it did only cost a quarter and you weren't really enticed to play it more than just a few games, so it wasn't going to break the bank. But there's not much to it other than just some fast-paced arcade gameplay, which, I mean, the Neo Geo was definitely known for, and this, this fits right in with that. And considering a lot of these games weren't just in arcades, just about every bowling center would have a little mini arcade in there. This was the perfect kind of simple, fun, addictive, quick pickup arcade action game that was required to just get people to drop a few coins essentially in four minutes you've played a game so this thing had the potential to earn you know all kinds of money if you had multiple people playing or if you had someone just dropping 50 cents in every time they showed up well i hope you enjoyed this little preview of league bowling on the neo geo and we will see you next time with more games so long